Don't I have to earn love? Right, Kathy? Shouldn't I yeah. get to work? Get, earn me some love? Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's a, it feels heavy just thinking about that. It's like, uh, it's like the hamster on the wheel. You never can stop because if you get a little love, but now you got to earn some more. And it's just a lot of us live our entire lives that way. And it's just really, I feel like it's a, a very heavy thing to have to deal with our whole lives. Um, and we'd love to help you kind of process where that came from and dismantle that. One of the things is if we have that belief very firmly implanted, it's very hard for us to see something else. So I've had, I have people in my life that love me for me. Rick loves me for me. But for years, there was a lot of like, I would ask him, did I do enough? Am I doing enough for our relationship? Because I had that belief that I had to earn his love, I wasn't able to see that he was just giving me love, if that makes sense. So I was always justifying, well, I did this for him. That's why he's being kind to me. I, I was good at this. I added to this. And there was always a struggle, this running on the treadmill kind of feeling when I didn't actually have to run on that treadmill. Rick just loves me. I just love him. He doesn't have to do or be something for me to love him. Adira, little, the little munchkin, she just gets love. And she's lucky enough to be in a family where that's very abundant and she gets to grow up with it. And we'd love to help you look at this in a different way so that you can dismantle some of the, the rules in your head that maybe keep you from seeing love around you that is not necessarily, you know, just available abundance for you. Um, you wanted to start with uh, some grounding and then. Yeah. Uh, and the chat is open, so please uh, feel free to share there what's coming up for you. It helps us too. Yeah. And Kathy and I also wanted to do some tapping with people more than, than even usual. Um, so if if you get to a place where you know that you'd like to do some tapping on what's coming up, please feel free to raise your hand under reactions. This is being record recorded, so you're. Uh, you're consenting to be on the recording if you do choose to volunteer. You can leave your video off or change your name if you'd like. Whatever and I just want to add, I work with, I'm a shy person and I work with a lot of shy people. If it feels really uncomfortable for you to raise your hand, Rick and I are often judging the time based on like how many hands are up, whether we continue to speak. You're welcome to direct message Rick or I and say, I would love to work. If raising your hand feels a little bit too visible or you feel shy about that. Um, you can direct message in the chat to us and let us know. That way we can kind of budget some time for you. We'll do our best to work with everybody who wants to. But because this topic is very tender, I'd love to invite you just, we're going to start with just setting the container. More people may drop in, but we're just going to like help your system know that you're in a safe place to deal with that. So I invite you just to take a slow, gentle, deep breath. <sighs> When you take a slow, deep breath in the bottom of your lungs, that sends biofeedback to your primitive brain, your survival brain, letting you know you're safe. When there's danger, we tend to take short, rapid, shallow breaths. That's one of those people, some people have trouble wearing masks for that reason because they start breathing shallowly and, and, and quickly, and it tells their brain that they're in danger. So when we take a nice, deep breath, it lets us know there's not a bear chasing. I'm actually safe to process this. And if we make a noise when we exhale, like I just did, and take a breath in and go, ah, that rattles the vagus nerve in a way that signals at a very primitive, deep level that you're safe. Doing this pre-work, I used to think it was silly. I'm like, oh, no, let's just dive in. I'll tough it through. But I wasn't really as available to do the deep work. So I invite you to... Don't just pretend to take a deep breath. Actually take that breath to the bottom. Imagine the bottom of your lungs are inhale are expanding. Maybe your tummy can come out too if that's okay. And then just breathe, let the air out, let it make a noise. Uh -huh, whatever that is. Yeah, nice. And I'd like to just feel your feet on the floor. I do this one a lot because we want to get you back in your body. Our society and our culture is really get it's very heady. 
um, and we want to get you in your body because that's where a lot of the stuff is stored. Notice the texture of your feet or maybe their feet are your feet are touching a carpet or your socks or a wood floor or vinyl or whatever that is. Notice the texture and the temperature and just let yourself be present with your feet and notice that you're not having to hold them up. Maybe you are, but you don't have to. If you put them on the ground, they're supported. Your butt is supported. Maybe your back is as well. The universe has you. And you're here in the safe space with these people. And we're a very loving group. If ever you're going to find a place to practice where you can practice abundant love just readily available, this is a good place to do it. So if you can just let yourself notice, like maybe look at if you want to go in gallery view or you can just look at Rick and I, just notice that this container is very safe and the feelings that you have are valid and we want you to be here. We want you to help. We want to help clear some of the blocks that stop you from feeling as loved as you want to feel. And it's very, very hard to feel deeply loved if you're feeling like you constantly have to earn it. And then if someone better comes along, you'll be kicked to the curb. Um, there's a constant, there's like an adrenaline feeling in my body even saying that. Like I have to try harder, I have to scramble constantly. And that means I never actually get to bask in the love I'm getting. I'm not able to actually absorb it and let that nutrient of love and attention and energy come in. So this is something that's very core. If we can just shift it just a little bit, we don't, we're not saying we're going to maybe feel shifted a lot, but you don't need to shift it 50% or 100% today. Even opening the door a little bit lets fresh energy in and lets you start healing this process because you'll start, once you taste love that's just really authentically given and not having to be earned, it tastes to me so much sweeter, so much better. And our system will naturally go towards that and we'll clear some blocks today too. But all you have to do is crack the door and just let a little bit of this in for the healing process to ha start happening. So just take another gentle deep breath. And if you can, feel yourself in the circle of people with the same intention that we're gonna clear some blocks, open the door, experience some love that's just very genuine and present and let our systems reacclimate, reorient, reorient. So it's looking for something different rather than the adrenaline dopamine fueled thing where we scramble constantly. We're going to just re reacclimate our bodies and that's a really powerful thing. So one more slow deep breath to let your body feel it's safe. Nice. Thank you for doing that with us. Don't I have to earn love? <laughs> and if you even say, I have to earn love. If you're in a place where you can say that, I have to earn love. How true does it feel? Zero to 10. I have to earn love. Now, if some for some people just tuning into that can surprise them like, Mine right now is an eight. Wow. Oh dear. I know it fluctuates because I've done this work before. But an eight's a big deal. Like, oh, I have to earn love. That's an eight. I can I'm I'm pretty sure that when I looked at the dishes tonight, what's coming into my mind is when I looked at the dishes. Oh, I, I need to do that tonight, even after the workshop in order to, to what? Earn love. Like, it's not logically true. It's one of those primal things. And I, as you tune into this, if you want to share your number, I see an, another eight, but he's in infinity, right? Um, what comes up for you? Um, What's the body sensation as you think about it? Like mine is definitely my body no. Like my body no is like in my throat, my upper chest. If 
I didn't know that that was my body. No, it would just feel like a pressure. And I might interpret it as meaning, yes, I have to, I have to, I have to, there's a pressure to. This feels more like, no, my spirit saying this is not actually true, but it drives you. <laughs> That's kind of one of my, <laughs> yeah. it's not really true, but it's really driving you at times. Yeah. If you feel like if, if tuning in right now and noticing it feels really intense, you can also think of a time where you felt this. Putting a little bit of time between now and you can, or the experience in you might make it a little softer. So if it's very intense, just think of some time last week or last year where you felt this and then try to remember what your body felt like. So today I'm feeling pretty loved. I'm feeling I've had a very gentle day in some ways. So I'm feeling like at a four, like I have to earn love. But I can still feel that kind of adrenaline anxiety feeling when I feel like I have to. And my brain starts scrambling, looking for ways I can prove myself worthy. So you know, just if you can tune into the specifics of this, it makes it more concrete. So often we have this belief, and if we don't also have body sensations with it, it's a lot harder to tackle. It's The thought or the belief is kind of ephemeral, and it's like trying to grab fog. It's a lot harder to get. But if you can actually remember how, my, how your body felt at a time, either right now or in a relatively recent past where you felt like you had to earn love, that's kind of making it more solid. It gives your system a way to kind of clear it more deeply. Um, oh, okay, I'm um, things for someone said I'm really loud, so I had just adjusted that, and I'm glad to know that. I will lower that. Is let me know if that's better. I'd rather we were balanced. It feels to me a little a little well, low, but okay, um, I can't hear myself. Okay, how? Yeah, that feels good. Okay, great. Thank you. I appreciate. P thanks for speaking up. Um. Someone shared, I feel confusion as in what does being loved really feel like and how would I even know? And I think that'd be a beautiful place to start tapping. Would that be okay, Rick? Sure. Do you want to lead that or do you want me to? Mm, how about you? Lovely. Okay, so just take a deep breath. Karate chop. Even though I'm not sure what being loved would actually feel like, even though I'm not sure what being loved would feel like if I didn't have if to I earn didn't it. have to earn it. Yeah. I'm really curious and I'd like to know. I'm really curious and I'd like to know. Even though there's part of me that doesn't know if I deserve to feel love I haven't earned. Even though part of me is unsure whether I deserve to feel love that I haven't earned. Maybe it's okay to try it out. Maybe it's okay to try it out. Even though I don't know what it would feel like. Even though I don't know what it would feel like. I'm pretty good at learning. I am pretty good at learning. And I might be able to figure this out. And I might be able to figure this out. What would love I didn't earn even feel like? What would love I didn't earn even feel like? Eyebrow, can I let that in? Can I let that in? Side of the eye, I'm so used to scrambling for my love. I'm so used to scrambling for my love. Under the eye, in those times when I'm really exhausted from working hard. Those times when I'm really exhausted from working hard. Under the nose, then I'm pretty sure I deserve it. Then I'm pretty sure I deserve it, even if I don't get it. Yeah, Chen, but I don't always get it then. But I don't always get it then. Collarbone, what if I can just let in a little bit of love right now? What if I can let in just a little bit of love right now? Under the arm. Love I don't have to scramble for. Love I don't have to scramble for. Top of the head. Love I don't have to prove myself for. Love I don't have to prove myself for. Love just for being. Just for being. And just take a deep breath. The way that I kind of broke through with this is because I struggled with this a lot is I, I don't right now, but I've had cats most of my life and my cat, a cats for anyone who's had cats, they're not really um, workhorses. They don't do a lot. 
like you tell I asked mine to vacuum all the time and she never once got the vacuum cleaner out not once um she'd just lick herself and look at me so like but I loved her just for her beingness like she didn't have to do anything I don't think dogs are as good in exology on that because dogs will try to earn your love but cats are like you don't have to love me I don't care but we love them anyway um for cat lovers so maybe that analogy helps you a little bit but I also think the universal love that we have around us like today I was out in the sunshine I didn't have to do anything to earn that sunshine. The air that's around us right now, I didn't, did you have to do anything to earn that? Or is it just there? What if the universe just loves us as we are? What if there's proof of that love all around us, but we're so focused on scrambling that we don't notice the other kinds of love? Which kind of takes us to, you know, part two which is where did we learn that mm -hmm. and there's a prime directive that mammals have mammals that are born um vulnerable and that prime oh, directive is what... hardly hear you someone oh, said okay um in that prime directive is that better um can you hear me I can okay hear you. I can okay. hear you, but let, we should, you know, if you I was can't... being soft here because this yeah. is a tender subject. We're getting thumbs um, up. So for me, um, being aware of the prime directive, I think has helped a lot of, of my unwinding some of the things that I was conditioned to being. So prime directive is what do I have to do and be and not do and not be in order to keep from being abandoned mm -hmm. and actually like left to die it is a it is a prime directive that um mammals are born with and they they start they we start figuring this out even in utero like oh i can tell by the stress chemicals in me that so my dna starts responding that this is not an actually loving, vibrant, we sing a song of love. No, it's it's like stress and worry and conflict, uh, war even, like our, we're adaptable. And so from the time that we're conceived as m mammals, we're in this process. And so we're born and, you know, a, a, I'm gonna call it like most parents, not all parents, and I know that many of many of us had parents that did not necessarily respond to us this way. But most parents are like, oh, they get this feeling, this feeling of intense love in them. And they they find their own child incredibly beautiful. And there's just this upwelling of emotion and energy. And the baby mammal responds by smiling and cooing and making eye contact and things like that. If that was not the case, um, you know, my mom loved me, I know, but she was incredibly worried. And there was a part of me that kicked in. Oh, for me, and it, the sense of having to earn it is I need to make the conditions right enough for her that there's something left over for me. Mm -hmm. Which was very smart and very logical. Oh, so I was such a smart little, little baby, you know, and my mother said I was such a good baby. Like everyone was so, yeah, you know what I was doing? I was, I was earning some space. She was 20, 23 years old, had four older boys that were her adopt, you know, stepsons. And, you know, uh, she all of a sudden had me and 14 months later had my brother. Can you see how like just the energetics set me up? My nature as being helpful, useful, like it's, it's fundamental to me. It wasn't just activated for that, but like that that I think really goes to if 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 the ones that care for me are worried, stressed, whatever, then my role is to show up and earn 
some space in their life. Mm -hmm. This chat is open. If this has evoked something for you, like where did you learn that? Yeah, and there's other sides of that too. If your parents were very insecure and not sure of their place in the world, they might want you to perform a lot. They might wanna push you to either be good enough so they felt good or so that you would survive well in the world. One of the things I love watching with uh, Rick and Jem with the baby Adira is they're not pushing her to talk. Like she's very, she's very good at communicating what she needs and they're very good at interpreting. And I think a lot of families would be like, nope, you don't get it unless you use your words, like pushing her to achieve that versus letting her evolve at her own pace. Like I think I see a lot of families I'm related to some where it's like you have violin, lesson, violin lessons at four and French lessons at five and like the kid is like constantly trying to be pushed to be something. So there's different ways, different levels that might come out. Are we trying to make sure our parents are resourced enough to give us a little love so a little bit spills back over us? Are we trying to perform and be like achieving? Our society is very achievement oriented. Um, there's lots of different ways that we, we juggle that. Um, yeah, I love the pictures at the end of, of Rick's emails too. I, I have to admit, I, sc I scroll there first and read that part before I go back up to the, to the rest of the email because um, she's adorable. But if you can tune into where did you learn this role that I have to earn love? If you, if you want to share in the chat, that's great. But when, did, where did you learn this? Where, where is the, where did that come in? Um, and sometimes it's not logical. If you hear yourself thinking this doesn't make any sense, that's beautiful. It's a great place to, to grab it because our logical brain can outthink logical decisions. Our logical brain cannot figure out the illog illogical ones that formed by the, because the primitive brain was facing situations it didn't understand. So if, it, if you're like, this doesn't really make sense, this is silly, those are great ones to do some tapping on. Um, do you want to share from the chat or? Yeah, let's, let's do some, let's just do some tapping and then we can yeah. do that. And if you're new to tapping, by chance you happen to be seeing this, welcome. Um, it's an emotional technology we covered in our free guide at thrivingnow.com slash tapping. Oh, even though I learned it. Even though I learned it. But I have to earn it. I have to earn it. Or else. Or else. And that felt really scary. That felt so scary. I'm looking at it again now. I'm looking at it again now top of the head. Don't you have to earn love? Don't you have to earn love? Eyebrow. Don't you have to earn love? Don't you have to earn love? Side of the eye. It sure felt that way. It sure felt that way. Under the eye. But maybe that's confusing. <laughs> maybe that's confusing. Maybe that's really a confused feeling. Maybe that's a really a confused feeling. Chin. Sometimes my parents were not very generous with love. Sometimes my parents were not very generous with love. Oh, and I know some parents just don't have it in them. And I know some parents just don't have it in them. The arm. And that's really hard. And that's really hard. Under the arm. Because feeling love's really natural, maybe. <laughs> feeling love is really natural, maybe. Maybe it's more like air. Maybe it's more like air. And sunshine. And sunshine. You have to earn your sunshine. You don't have to earn your sunshine. <laughs> <clears throat> I think that one of the things that can feel really empowering is reminding our survival brain, reminding the part of us that believes this, is that that belief was likely true. Many of us grew up in scarcity. We grew up with families. My parents had a lot of brokenness about them. They, they meant well, they tried, but they're, they weren't resourced. They were exhausted. They were overwhelmed. They didn't have the skills. Tapping didn't exist back then. They couldn't get on the internet and Google what was going on. So 
to them, love was scarce. There wasn't a lot of it. And it was metered out. Like, they were so exhausted. It's like you were only going to use it as special treats to get people to do stuff. So just realizing that in that world, love was scarce. Love did have to be earned. And there were probably more areas I could have gotten love, but I was very focused on trying to keep the parents, like Rick said, like trying to make sure they were functioning okay enough for, for the family. Um, but we don't live... For most, most of us don't aren't stuck home with our parents anymore. Even if someone's living with their parent to take care of them or whatever. It's like there's the internet. There's other people. We're not stuck in that world. When we're little, the parents become the conduit of like they're, they control access to other things. If they say no, you don't get to go to Susie's house to spend the night or whatever it is. You're, you're kind of stuck in their world. So that belief may have been really true. It, and I think it's important to realize and not put down the part of us that figured that out, like, because it was probably really true and we functioned as well as we could. But what if we've immigrated to a different country now, a different place where love is much more abundant and we can let go of some of that rigidity and that belief? Hmm. Before we read the chat, I'm, 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 I'm reading and I'm, I'm tenderly aware that, you know, when you take a group of of people and we each had different upbringings, some in different generations, um, different cultures. I know that people will be watching this from the other side of the world where they're currently not available for, <laughs> for, for being on a, a live session. And I, as a, as a coach and a human, it's sometimes helpful for me to separate out, like, I think a lot of what the, the mystics and the philosophers have talked about very many different flavors of love, you know, from the romantic activation um, to that kind of unconditional regard and, and, and love and many different, many, many, many different flavors um, it can be helpful. And one of the reasons Kathy and I, I think are bringing in breath and sun and maybe some, some food or your furry friend who, who really radiates a different attitude towards you than maybe other human beings that starting with a, a, a palpable feeling within it can be a spiritual feeling uh, if you are connected to, to spirit in some way that your body responds to. Maybe when it's in nature, maybe in meditation or prayer or dance or song, that there's a vibration within us that we can, we can tune into. And what I'd like to invite is and even if you're on the recording, I invite you to do this too. Imagine that we're just a small group in a circle, okay? A small group and um, kind of using our imagination, feeling the energy of a circle. And, and I'd like to invite the best that you're aware of, if there's some moment in nature that activates a feeling of like, oh, I love that. That's, that's good for me. That's important to me. With your furry friend, with a loved one. Um, Maybe a stuffed animal, what, some type, something that you feel safe and loved with. Yeah. And as we just do our best to tune into that feeling, as you're aware of other people in the circle doing that, that there's a light, a vibration, a tone, and that you can feel that too, just in the same way that we can hear a song, you can hear, hear my voice. Maybe you can feel the feeling that I got looking over at my daughter standing on the, the stone steps with her fists in the air, just looking, feeling so good in her beingness. And come back to what 
you're attuned to Yeah. And if you'd like, feel free to, to share what you're noticing. <sighs> and if you're new to this, if this is something that you haven't done a lot of experience with, it's okay. When I, when I first started learning to feel things like this, uh, the question was, if you could, if you can't, you know, like, if you imagined you could feel it, what would it be like? Because for some of us, we've been tuned out of that awareness. I think we're all aware, but when we're little kids, we're, it's not encouraged or reinforced, so we kind of tune it out. So, you know, if you could imagine what that felt like, what would, what would you imagine it would feel like is a perfectly good way to respond as well. Now, I want to do a tapping on the kind of the difference between someone unconditionally taking care of us yeah which is that part of bonding and attachment and this vibration that we're tuning to one of the vibrations of love because if we if we grew up without it honestly that that part of me doesn't feel very well met you know and but it's different than what we're talking about with love like earning someone's care and attention is is i'm i'm offering that that's different than walking around feeling love as a vibration as an energy as something that we have access to does that make sense kathy yeah i think to me it's kind of like being out under the sun feeling the sun radiating on my body versus being under a fluorescent lamp there's just a different frequency and a different it doesn't i don't get quite as nourished in the same way fluorescent lights are kind of tiring to me i still get light does that make yeah, yeah. i'm let's see where it goes and yeah. feel free to tap along if this feels right to you even though i really didn't have the kind of loving attachment that i wanted as a child even though I didn't have that kind of loving attachment I wanted as a child. That I would have really thrived under. That I would have really thrived under. From one or both of them. For one or both of them. <sighs> that, that could be different than the kind of love we're talking about. That could be different than the kind of love we're talking about. I, would have, I needed someone to tend to me. I needed someone to tend to me. Eyebrow. I needed someone to be devoted. I needed someone to be devoted. Side of the eye, no matter what. No matter what. Side of the eye. That would have been really natural. That would have been really natural. No, that would have been thriving. That would have been thriving. Jen, that would have helped me feel so securely attached. <laughs> that would have helped me feel so securely attached. Oh, it wasn't exactly like that. <laughs> it wasn't exactly what I got. The arm. That's a different kind of love. It's a different kind of love. I want to feel love without having to earn it. I want to feel love without having to earn it. <sighs> I think when you when you were saying that, it brought up to me like I've had a. Uh, a physical therapist work on my like a shoulder or something like working on muscles versus someone who loved me working like Rick gives amazing massages so the the muscles got moved there was some actual physical tending that got done that was useful but it didn't feel as nurturing or as loving they didn't feel like there was that warmth and that investment I think there's an energy that we feel we receive as humans or as any animal that we really thrive under this beautiful, like abundant loving. And I, someone shared, I, I was think I was confusing love with approval. I think I had to be perfect for approval. And approval is, we like approval as humans. We like people saying, attaboy, good job, be way to go or whatever. But that can be done very distantly. And, and it can also be done with an investment and a caring about us. Like, with Adira, just to go back to that example, she's not yet speaking. She's getting her needs met beautifully and she's able to communicate what she wants very clearly. Um, but there's, 
there's an approval of her beingness and a love for her that doesn't require her to act a certain way to get it, if that makes sense. There's an approval of her overall being, but it's not a performance. She doesn't have to speak full sentences or learn French to be loved. So I think that we, we long for that. There's well, a different- I think parenting, I just wanna yeah. say that like, when she throws her food on the floor, I'm not feeling particularly approving. <laughs> You still love her, but you're not approving. I still love her. <laughs> but the, you know, and I, I think that that's one of the manipulations that a lot of parents fall into is this withholding. And you see this in adult relationships too. I mean, there are books written about like withholding yourself until, you know, and I don't mean just sexually. I mean, like make, make yourself hard oh, to get. This um, hard to get, a, you know, this sense of being um, connected and, and uh, it's, it's a strategy. I think so many people are, um, are recovering. Like I, I was loved, but I was not loved in the way that my, my fundamental thriving self really benefits from just to say. Um, and the gap there, there's a recovery process. And that's why we feel that the subject as tender as it can be, if, if we can move it, as Kathy said, I just want to, I want to reamplify that. I have to earn, earn puts it in an exchange, a tit for tat. I do this and I get that. Like, that's a terrible strategy for, for relationships that are um, like kin yeah. or closer loverships and kinships the idea that it's a an ex, a, a mercantile exchange is is a terrible strategy that's like gets people doing 50 percent of the dishes and they count the number of forks i i know people like this honestly um <laughs> ah, uh, rather than being there with your full self and so the more that we can take love and relating and co-creating out of the realm of like um, earning, I think our relationships change. Just a five or 10% change is like, oh, what do I get to express of myself today? Right, and that doesn't mean we can't have boundaries. So like, you know, if I don't want to do the dishes, I can say, I don't want to do the dishes. Let's, you know, let's order food in, or you can do the dishes. We can trade with each other, but that's different than the love and just doing things for each other out of love even, rather than this. Even though I've been punished in love relationships. <laughs> even though I've been punished in love relationships. When I didn't do what they wanted. When I didn't do what they wanted. They weren't going to give me what I needed. They weren't going to give me what I needed. They made that really painfully clear. They made that really painfully clear. I had to earn it. I had to earn it. Because all love comes from a store. <laughs> all love comes from a store. Top of that. Amazon.love. Amazon.love. <laughs> I bro, what do I have to do? What do I have to do? What do I have to pay? What do I have to pay? What do I have to sacrifice? What do I have to sacrifice? To get love. To get love. Boy, that's a big one. That's a big one. And I'm in the process of re-examining this. And I'm in the process of re-examining this. Do I feel the most loving when it's in exchange? Well, do I feel most loving when it's in exchange? You know, where someone's really earned it. Where <laughs> someone's really earned it. Yeah. <clears throat> fetch kitty, fetch. <laughs> fetch kitty, fetch. <laughs> yeah, there is a sense if we turn it around where people feel like I've earned your love, you're I'm entitled to your love, and then I feel obligated and I don't feel very loving. Versus if I'm doing something and I really love the relationship Rick and I have, where it's like, yeah, I don't we were supposed to work on Monday night and do some pro project we were working on and he was really tired and he's told me that versus if he had felt obligated to show up and do the work, I would have felt his energy. We both would have been more depleted from it versus him just saying, yeah, I don't want to do this tonight. Let's reschedule. And I was like, oh, great. Okay. 
and we rescheduled and most of the time when we meet it's like unless there's some weird deadline it's very easy and flowy and like we i leave feeling more nur nourished and loved than when i started versus if we were both there out of obligation kind of forcing our way through which is i think how a lot of people live their lives i like even i do a lot of work with people around sexual shame it's like yeah, I did. I gave him a blowjob. Therefore, he owes me this. And I'm like, did you enjoy giving the blowjob? Like, no, I just did it so I would get that. I'm like, that doesn't sound very fun for anybody. Like, why don't you just be with your body and notice what feels good and like find an exchange that feels, you know, like I help them work through some of the blocks around that because so many of us are stuck in these relationships where we're muscling through to try to get this love that will be given begrudgingly because it's now obligated. And that just feels so bad. Uh, love and earning it. I love and earning it. And all that that's meant to me. And all that that's meant to me. Earning love. Earning love. And all that that's meant to me. And all that that's meant to me. All that I've expected others to do. All that I've expected others to do. <laughs> All that I've expected myself to do. All that I've expected myself to do. I had to, didn't I? I had to, didn't I? I brought all that they expected me to do. All that they expected me to do. Side of the eye. I really want to clean up this energy. I really want to clean up this energy. Under the eye. And if this is true for you, I enjoy loving. I enjoy loving. I enjoy the feeling of love. I enjoy the feeling of love. I enjoy that feeling of connection. I enjoy that feeling of connection. And collarbone. And sometimes I do things. And sometimes I do things. And it makes it easier for others. And it makes it easier for they others. They might even love what I do. They might even love what I do. <laughs> yeah. But is that the actual love. But is that the actual love? So like if if somebody is stressed and you and you do something that's an act of service, which is a love language, right? And you're doing it because, you know, it feels good to you to do it. Then in and of itself, that's a complete act of love. Like oh, I'm taking care of this. It's an act of love. You can allow yourself to feel the love that's embodied in you doing that act of service. And if that makes it easier for someone else to show up with more energy and less distraction, and they can feel a little softer and a little juicier in, in your world, awesome. Yeah. You know, we, we do things with each other. And I think that one of the things about um, getting it out of the earning and more into the expression side of love is, well, I get to, I don't have to. An essential part of an emotional freedom, as Kathy says, is you get to opt out. There's mm -hmm. like, I, I, my muscle there is so strong. If you said, well, you have to do this before you go to bed. out the door. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it has so much fun throwing all the dishes in the trash can. Um, <laughs> like there... my, rebe my re rebellion, I, I wouldn't have to go that far, probably. <laughs> but you can feel like, oh, no, there's like layers of boundary around have to, which creates a different kind of dynamic. We're not, we're not subconsciously doing all of this earning stuff, which creates this balance that never you know, never eat, nobody feels very good about. Well, and I think a lot of it's unspoken. So like if I've agreed, like we have this unspoken agreement that I will do X, Y, Z to earn ABC from you and I do X, Y, Z, but you didn't really understand the, those rules or you don't feel like doing it. Now I feel resentment and, oh, I did, all, I paid you the coin. Where's my stuff? And you're like, huh? I thought you were doing that because you love me. And you're like, no, I do love you, but you're owe me. Um, there's a lot of, it can just make a very tangled mess. Oh, all the oh me. <laughs> all the oh me. Oh me. Oh, oh my. Oh me, oh my. <laughs> you owe me. You owe me. Uh, 
I owe them. I owe them. Oh, I just love obligation. I just love obligation. It's so sexy. It's so sexy. I need to, I really want to get the obligation out of this. I really do want to get the obligation out of this. And the earning pressure. And the earning pressure. Not everyone is oriented that way. Not everyone's oriented that way. <sighs> there are definitely people that um, just energetically and logistically, there's a very clear expectation of this kind of tit for tat. Like if, if I do this, then you're going to do this. If I do this, you're going to do that. And I know we're weird. Like, we're saying no. Um, how about if we structure it differently? And as adults, hopefully consenting adults, we can say, "Hey, you know, there are things that that um, that definitely make it easier for me to feel sexy, for example, or snugly, for example. And there are things that, if they're still present, I'm going to be distracted by them. And this is." You know, I'm looking inside myself. I'm not punishing anyone for not doing the dishes by not being um, available. Like, I think that that's a self-awareness thing on how, we're, how we withhold if we're not getting paid um, for that, <laughs> right? But there, there's a, it's a different level of conversation. I'm not saying that everyone's ready for it, but I appreciate so much that we're here exploring this Yes. tonight uh you know in this session this real skill because i do believe it's a real skill that leads to thriving mm -hmm. that we take the earning love earning sex earning attention out of it it doesn't mean that we can't fashion exchanges as part of love relationships but and i don't actually feel very loved or loving if I am doing it to earn it, as I'm as I'm feeling into this myself, how about for you guys? Do you actually feel loving if you're doing it to earn something? No, I feel more desperate. Like I'm trying to pull from the universe what I need or this person what I need. Um, and I do think do a desperate tap. <laughs> karate tap. Even though I feel kind of desperate. Even though I feel kind of desperate. I'm trying so hard to earn this love. I am trying so hard to earn this love. And I keep throwing coins at the person. And I keep throwing coins at the person. I'm, and I'm not getting the love I need. And I'm not getting the actual love I need. I feel so, so de I that. I feel so desperate. I can get really desperate. Mm. I really need some love right now. I really need love right now. Side of the eye. And I'm pulling at that person as hard as I know how. And I can, I am pulling at that person as hard as I know how. Under the eye and trying so hard to earn their love. Trying so hard to earn their love. Under the nose. Maybe they don't like it when I pull that way. Maybe they don't like it when I pull that way. Or maybe they don't have it to give. Yeah. Chin, maybe their tanks are empty right now. Maybe their tanks are empty right now or permanently. <laughs> Collarbone, when I was little, I could only turn to my parents. When I was little, I could only turn to them. Under the arm, but now I can turn to lots of different people. I, I can turn to lots of different people, or at least my world is bigger. Yeah. Lots of people doesn't seem accurate right now. <laughs> yeah, That's top right. of the head. I do have other options. I do have other options, including right now. Yeah, and just if you take a breath, I think that Someone shared in the chat, both my for both of my parents, they, they got this earning love thing. My mom was very anxious and worried, and my dad used to use a lot of guilt. I definitely felt, felt like I needed to be a certain way for each of them. The thing is, I don't think we're going to get those rid of the, like some of those people we may not be able to use, um, they may not be able to shift or see a different way of being. So like my mother, I'm I'm most favorite daughter right now because I helped her with some scary finances for her. So like, she's very, very approving and happy and loving towards me and her tanks get very low. And I know that that's not um, necessarily going to stick, so to speak, like the loving, easy relationship we have right now. I try very hard to take care of myself around that. I, when I, like sometimes I'll, I'll line up Rick to talk after I talk to her or I'll, I'll reach out to another friend to just kind of like rebalance myself after her. I, 
so I think we're going to have people in our lives that are still doing this. And I don't know that there's a way to like be in this pure own circle where we're just surrounded by people that understand we can just love each other and have choice. But I do think we can, we can train our system to get love multiple places. I think that there's a taste um, for me, like there's certain people that identified with safety and I really wanted that flavor of love and my subconscious, my inner children, whatever, like must get it from that person and then I'll be safe because when I was little, that was true. Um, and now I'm like, okay, I get that you want chocolate flavored love from that particular person, but let's try strawberry flavored love from this person. Have a bite, see if it helps you feel a little more filled up and like kind of, um, slowly help my system be more acclimated to lots of sources of love and then if i get some lovely chocolate that's great but i you know i'm strawberry and kiwi and you know no brussels sprouts please but you know you can you can pick and choose so i think the more we expose ourselves to different kinds of love and it can be really hard at first our sub our our primitive brain may have latched on to the like the only source of love when we were little was mom or dad or this particular energy and we have to get that to feel safe um, there can be a lot of pull for that particular thing and just being compassionate understanding that that was life or death at that point our survival brain does understand that if we can't get our parents to take care of us we're often going to die it's not pretend die it's like our brain knows that we're high enough food if we don't have parental care of some kind so just having compassion for ourselves like i know you want that kind of love let me give you some of my love instead. Let's try finding other people we can share little bits of love with as we learn to have different flavors. Let's pause there for a second. Yeah. So um, we like to give a seven minute break in the middle of the workshop. And that's what we're gonna do right now. And we'll come back at half past. If you're on the recording, we invite you to take care of yourself um, as well. So we'll come back in seven minutes and get started again. And consider whether you'd like to do tapping with us and either drop that in the chat or raise your hand. Otherwise, Kathy and I will continue. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. You see. Welcome back. Yeah. Mm. So, um, and again, if you want to raise your hand, feel free to do so under reactions it's down at the bottom there or under dot 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 on phones or chat to us yeah so one of the one of the ways when you're doing tapping um you're trying to move in a direction like whoa what if i don't have to earn love what if that's not actually true what if love's uh, more like air and sun and it's a vibration that i can tune myself to either through receiving from whatever sources of love are available to me um, or by expressing that into, into the atmosphere, into a relationship, into my home, into my body. Um, so as, as that, you know, that to me is that, particular those particular flavors of love if we can tap into them it helps us be more calm and confident one of our real skills and it helps us to be able to co-create so if i come into this workshop and i'm really trying to get from you guys my love needs met that would feel very different so what i did during the time beforehand is i you know i i lay down i felt gravity holding me, the, the couch holding me. I had a little homemade, one little homemade chocolate that my partner had made and put in a little tiny container for me. Mm -hmm. um, little things that allowed me to fill my, my vibration up. Now, the other side of that is like, well, if I stop trying to earn love, what's gonna happen? <laughs> and it doesn't have to be true to be a fear or a block to be a fear to be a block to be something that like even if you're doing an act of service or quality time together another love language um that like if you're holding on to this yes but if i'm not doing the things and being the things that earn me love then so there's like this constant tension. And a lot of times 
I didn't even, I wasn't even aware of how much tension I would hold around this. And even now, as I, um, as I think about like, and you can ask yourself the question, well, what, if I don't try at least to earn love, then what? What if you didn't have to earn love? What if it was just there for you? What comes up for you? Yeah, that my my question is a little different as I mm -hmm. either one. Um, my question is if you if this is a thing for you and you stopped, what arises in you as a feeling or as a thought? Well, I will, yeah, if I don't keep earning love or trying to earn love then. And again, it doesn't have to be logical. There might be part of you like, oh, I won't get any, or how do I know it's love, or how do I have control over it, or... How would I get it? Mm -hmm. Where and how would I get it if I wasn't trying to earn it? Mm -hmm. And there's I'd also... Like, <laughs> yeah. like uh, if I'm not trying to earn love, then I'll just be alone. Like Our bodies also get used to a certain chemical mix. So people that have had a lot of trauma, there's actually that roller coaster of adrenaline and cortisol and all that, that there's kind of a craving for it after a while. Our body gets kind of addicted to the highs and lows. And the same thing, if we're so addicted to the dopamine and the adrenaline rush of like, am I going to get it? It's almost like gambling. Did I earn enough? Did I do enough? Did I do enough? Oh, good. <laughs> the up and down. So like stepping off the roller coaster can feel really weird. The quietness is just like, Wait, what's happening? Hmm. If I don't earn love, then I'll be alone. I'll never have it. It won't come to me. It won't stay. I have to always be earning it or it won't stay. One thing that I noticed coming up for me, because I've not seen... Um, other people share is uh, like, I feel like some part of me feels like I'm barely tolerated right now. Like people are barely putting up with me. And if I stop earning that, if I stop trying to keep ahead, they'll see how worthless I am or I'll just be dumped. Um, so I noticed that thought like, oh, well, if I stop trying to earn it, then I'll just slide off the back and no one will ever talk to me again. They'll like, oh my God, who is that person? Um, so whatever those are, like, they don't have to be logical. A lot of the, our beliefs are formed by the time we're, I think 80% are formed by the time we're five. We don't have a lot of experiences in the world. We're making up the best beliefs we can make out of the pieces we're given. Even though I'm convinced I'll be alone. Tap, tap. Even, even though I'm convinced I'll be alone. If I don't earn love. If I don't earn love. Mm that may have something to do with the people I've loved. <laughs> that may have something to do with the people I've loved. But I'm, part of me is convinced. But part of me is convinced. If I stop earning it. If I stop earning it. They'll leave. They'll leave. Top of the head. That doesn't feel good. That doesn't feel good. Eyebrow. That feels really stressful. That feels really so stressful. Side of the eye. That might even make love hard. That might even make love hard. It's hard for me to feel loved. It's hard for me to feel loved. If I feel I'm laboring for it. If I feel like I'm laboring for it. And another day in the salt mines. <laughs> another day in the salt mines. Earning my love for the day. Earning my love for the day. Oh. <laughs> I really need a different paradigm. <laughs> I really need a different paradigm. I'd like to make love easier. I'd like to make love easier. Facilitate it for us. Facilitate it for us. Make it easier for me. Make it easier for me. Eyebrow, make it easier for we. Make it easier for we. Side of the eye. What if we're all tired of earning love? What if we're all tired of earning love? Yeah, it can be really tiring. It can be really tiring. And terribly scary. And terribly scary. 
And I'm sure that puts others completely at ease. <laughs> I'm sure that puts others completely at ease. I want to feel how terrified I am that if I don't earn their love. <laughs> to feel how terrified I am of not earning their love. That they're just going to leave. That they're just going to leave. Because <laughs> they're only in it for what, they, for what I do for them. They're only in it for what I do to them. Do for them. <sighs> You'll notice I in I I brought in an energy. So the difference between earning it and making it easier, I've I've alluded to it before. But let's like, where do we stand if we're not earning love from one another? Then then what are the things that make love easier? So for example. If I love that you're here, I, I, Kathy, I'm so, I love that we're doing, getting to do this together. It takes, it takes so much pressure off to know that I've got a co-creator and, you know, I really love that. And you're like, oh no, Rick, it's really just my honor to like, can you feel the deflection? Like, versus just like, oh, thank you. Uh, I really love that. Yeah. So like we can make love easier to exchange mm -hmm. by not with actively withholding or um, feeling like we need to slather someone, you know, with, with something, earn it I that way. I think that there's sometimes when I'm trying to earn love, I'll have a script and that really makes it hard. So it's like, I have in my head that I'm going to have Rick come over. I'm going to make him this really nice dinner and he's going to really appreciate it. And he'll want to, he'll want to hug me and say how much he loves me versus what reality might be. He comes over and he's like, Oh, I already ate. And now I'm like, ah, no, you have to eat this food that I made you so that I can get the love as opposed to like just allowing ourselves to be together and like be with the moment rather than trying to no, you have to eat this because I need the love that I thought I was going to get. We just, I think that gets rigid. Um, and I do think there's ways we can make it easier. I like the idea of the analogy of the sun. If I sit inside my house with all the windows and doors closed, it's hard for me to get the warmth and love from the sun, right? I actually have to go out where the sun can be on my skin. Um, so like, I think for, I, I tend to be shy. So if I don't have a buddy to go with, I'm like, oh, I can't go, I'm, so, I'm shy. Um, but that really kept me limited and I had to kind of say, okay, well, I'm going to go for a half hour and meet some people. I had to be out where the sun, where I was exposed to people and I had to start showing who I was to them because I was very shy. I would like kind of sit there kind of quiet and it was hard for them to connect with me. So I think there, it, there are things we can do. It, like it's a different kind. It's not earning it. It's being ex like letting ourselves be exposed to it, opening ourselves up to it is different than like, I have to earn it. I have to perform or be or do something as opposed to, oh, if I want some sunshine, it really does help if I leave the house. If I want friendships and connections, it really helps if I show up places like this or meetups or someplace where I can actually connect with people. Uh, someone brought up that, you know, that if, if we notice in our relationships that we fall into this caretaking and earning love, by doing a lot of emotional labor, mm -hmm. we can acknowledge that, oh, if that's a dynamic that's strong in me, that I, that is so sexy to someone who wants someone to like take care of them. And be, <laughs> like, it is like, that's, we had a stray cat break into our garage and my, my partner has herbs and found the one bag of catnip, right? So like if there's a thousand people and this person really wants someone who's just going to tend to their needs and always have that little drive, even if they're exhausted to do it, <laughs> you're the, you'll be like catnip <laughs> for them. Right. And, and I, I recognize that in myself and every time I've shifted it a bit more, the, the connections that I have have a lot less stress and a lot more mutuality. They may not be as intense because I may not be trying so hard um, to, but there's, there's an ease. That's what I look for. I look for mutuality and ease 
that people are are capable of noticing um like what makes me more vibrant you know vibrating with love like if if i say something like i don't know what to make for dinner and somebody else makes dinner <laughs> i have so much more resource now if neither of us have that then you know it's going to be harder to feel that tending but if i'm the type of person and i'm grateful that i'm not that would notice that oh all i have to do is get all stressed out and then this person jumps to meet my need um and there's there's never a recalibration consciously you know it, it doesn't have to be machiavellian it's it it can just be like that's humans we we were late <laughs> we often really like somebody else to do everything for us and we sometimes adopt strategies that aren't very useful subconsciously so you know, even yeah absolutely that's what i meant subconsciously it's not yeah even though I've been taken advantage of. Even though I have been taken advantage of. And I take advantage of myself. And I take advantage of myself. By feeling like I need to earn love. By feeling like I need to earn love. And with some people, that just seems the way it is. With some people, that just feels like the way it is. And some people, it doesn't even matter what you do to earn it. And some people, it doesn't even matter what you do to earn it. You ain't getting it the way you, you want it. You ain't getting it the way you want it. I would really like more ease here. I would really like more ease here. With myself and with others. With myself and with others. What can we do to make it a little easier? What can we do to make it a little easier? Yeah. I'm, when you said with, I think different people have different things they can give at different times. And I'm thinking of a cat where they, they like to lay in the sun. And if the sun shifts, they'll just move with the sun or they'll move to a different window. Like, can we be that flexible? Do we, we get, I think we get attached to getting the sunshine a certain way, as opposed to like, huh, there's no sun at this window. Let me go check other windows. Let me go, where can I find that, that, abundance and it also when I'm giving love to people one of the most important things you can do is build the skill of saying is this what I want to do for me mm. so if I'm <laughs> giving the loving thing if I give someone a massage because it's pleasurable for me or someone a blowjob because it's pleasurable for me I'm getting nourished and resourced while I'm doing it or cooking dinner or whatever it is if it's a yes for me to do it and I do it then there's not that expectation back. I'm already like, I had pleasure in giving. And there are times when the trash needs to go out or the dishes need to get washed where we're kind of like, I don't always find joy in that, I have to say. But I try to find joy in the things I'm doing that are a choice. And like today for half two hours, I sat on the couch and watched gold, Whitewater Gold Mining Show. It was very silly. It was very dangerous. I was like, thank God I'm not doing that. But that's what my my body just wanted to relax for a couple hours and not work. And I had that space to do that. So like just checking in with yourself, what feels right to me right now? And even having the skill to say, you know, I told you I'd do that, but I checked it again and I don't, it doesn't feel like a yes to me. What other options do we have? Or I don't want to cook dinner anymore. Do you want to order in or do you want sandwiches? Those are your choices for me. If you have some other option you want to cook, great. But like, just being more flexible with ourselves and not so like we have to achieve something to get that love and giving our building the muscle of checking in with ourselves that pause rick did a beautiful call on that like can i pause and just check in with myself can i allow the other person to pause and check in with themselves am i getting sunlight with from a lot of places so if that person says no i don't feel like i'm in a barren desert anymore So the most complicated places where we get into these dances are with other human beings, mm -hmm. usually, and uh, we're one. <laughs> so um, I, I'm going to kind of go back to if there is a way for you to start 
attuning yourself that that there's like I believe that this crystal it was given to me by Kathy so that's one way but even just as a, a gift from the universe of a very interesting interesting thing and it was found by someone and and crafted into something that I have on my desk here that by holding it and noticing it and allowing my body to attune to its, its essence. I, for me, my spiritual reality is that the essence of creation is love. It's a feeling though, not necessarily an act or actions, but it's a feeling and it's a feeling that's, that's, that you can tune to with anything that's been created, including a relationship that we have or a human being or um, an, a piece of art, heart, anything, anything that re you respond to that you can attune to it. There's an energy there. And the more facile that we get with this, the more that when in our human relations, it isn't easy or it doesn't feel as mutual as we'd like it to be, that we're not left without that vibration. Because I, I believe we've all kind of felt today that as soon as you start getting into, well, I don't have that feeling, I better earn it. Mm -hmm. Like it's an empty wallet. It's not an empty wallet. It's certainly a feeling of nourishment and connection that that I believe our essence needs retuning to. Um, pretty often for me, I don't know how it is for everyone else, but like I, <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I'm a guitar that comes out of tune after every every song. So um, so I've had to learn how to reconnect that way over and over and over and over again, and. Um, as soon as I fall into that, I need to earn this. I'm hungry I'm, I, and I need to earn it. I'm, I'm grateful that right now, my, my feeling of that has dropped from an eight to about a, a two, three. Um, nice. And I'm really attuned to, well, yeah, I do things that make it easier. There are things that I approve of, meaning that they're congruent with who I am and what I stand for and what I want in my world. Um, including being having some capacity for emotional labor for others. I think that's a really great thing. Um, I think a lot of our view, you, if you've had pets in your life, you know that there are times when you're like, oh, you've got to be kidding. <laughs> it's three in the morning and rainy and you need to go for a walk. Uh, what? <laughs> and we do it um, not uh, because that's congruent for us. That's that's can be hard, but it's not damaging to our circuitry. I do believe that trying to earn love is a kind of way that our nervous system gets tuned to, to a very different energy, the energy of commerce and tit for tat and exchange, but not even in the good way. It would be like if somebody, if, if you were really thirsty and someone had lots of water, but they're going to charge you everything you've got for that drink of water. There would some be, you might do it, but it would feel really gross compared to like, oh, I've got plenty here. Just sip it, take your time, there's more. Like to me, love is more akin to an abundance of thirst quenching energy, even if it doesn't look like sex or, or that's not available, that our, our core essential nature can be met, but it's not gonna be met in that that earning place, if that makes any sense. I love in when uh, Rick and I studied, uh, we went and trained with some people for a cuddle party facilitating, and they talked about the relationship between two people as a third entity, like that they would say, what is the quality of, like, how is the relationship doing, the relationship between two people? And I, when I the think of I the we space, yeah. Um, and I think of like, if I'm doing something out of love and generosity, I'm feeling that balloon of the we space 
with like this generous, warm, sunshine love. And if I'm doing something out of obligation, I'm kind of filling it with wet paper. Um, is there something in there, but it's not really juicy or abundant. And there's times when I've been putting things in and the other person's just not returning it. And I get to decide, like with a small child or a pet, then maybe that's, I felt, I feel like a lot of love comes back from Adira or my pets, but um, like, is that we space feeling really balanced and good? Or are you just putting it in and hoping that something will come out? Or are you piling in things out of obligation or, or despair? And maybe there's other relationship spaces you could fill up. And I think that humans flourish when we have a lot of different spaces where we're exchanging love and support. We're, we're really built for a community. We're really, our survival brain feels safe. I feel safest when I have a number of people that I know I can turn to. And then if Rick's busy with a deer, I can call another friend for support. So I think when we start training ourselves to be looking at the quality of energy that we're putting into the we space and the quality of energy that's coming back. And there's always fluctuations. There's like, Rick was really tired yesterday and we didn't talk until late in the day. It's fine. If I could have done something for him, if I lived closer, I would have like scooped up the baby so he could rest his head. But like, you know, there's, there's fluctuations, but overall, what's the balance of this? Do I feel like it's a really good fit or could I invest some of my loving energy and time and space with someone else? Anyone have any final questions? Um, we're not going to open it up for volunteers at this point with only five minutes left, but I, I do appreciate the energetic connection that I'm feeling. And the, um, the topic is a dear one for me. Um, I, want, I want to live in a world where there's emotional freedom for all. Yeah. And emotional freedom to me is grounded in that access to that vibration. And that there is something sacred about being able to share it in a we space as we are now, for me, I feel it um, in other we spaces that we have, and also to feel the savvy to be able to attune to it with other other doorways to that energy. Um, so, and to recognize, oh, I'm actually in earning mode. Um, yeah, pause. Yeah, I'm thinking that this will earn me some loving and I'll be a little <laughs> ridiculous, right? Like, ah, I think this is going to earn me some loving. And I know that that's just what the notion of that would be so repulsive to my partner. Yeah. Oh, she, right? would, she would kick your butt. <laughs> yeah, earn, earn some loving. Um, and I'm, I'm grateful that that wouldn't, isn't her style. Um, but like, oh, I, I like making it easier for me uh, to and for the we to have more love energy infused, to, to do the things that we're also looking at here, pausing and confidencing and finding essential comforts. I think in that essential comforts workshop that we did, um, you can find it at thrivingnow.center, uh, essential comforts, just search for it. In that one, I that energy of allowing ourselves to attune to something that comforts us is the feeling of love to me. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And I think there's a, um, someone was sharing that they feel so exhausted and out of balance in their relationships. And I do think that's a sign. They're not like the practice of just stopping and going, huh, what kind of, what am I giving right now? And that's a, that's a muscle that many of us don't have. And it's okay if you're awkward or you can only do it once in a while. Or when I first started doing it, it'd be three days later. And I'm like, oh, that's what I was doing. Uh, but just realize if you're noticing it all, you have an awareness that a lot of people don't have. A lot of people are just on that, they're just on that treadmill trying to earn that love and they're not stopping or even realizing there's another way. Um, and someone like asked- address, Can I talk oh, about the pleasing people? <laughs> So I, I love to please people. That is not a problem. If I'm doing it to try to earn something, then that does not work um, very well energetically or yeah. emotionally for me because- um, It's kind of manipulative. And also if I'm doing things that aren't really a yes. So Kathy has mentioned that a number of times that um, 
if we're doing something that's a yes, that it's self-contained as a yes, then someone can't take advantage of us by like making us earn it, right? Because, well, that was a yes for me and that was a yes for me. I'm going from yes to yes to yes. I'm actually feeling pretty good. Oh, you don't want to do this? Fine. I just said three yeses in a row. <laughs> Whew, I may need to take a break. Um, you, you, you stay in your yes. And again, like I did mention, there are times when our yes is hard because we may not have the energy, but it, a yes for me of like taking care of a screaming child or changing a diaper on her when she really just apparently wants to kick her legs in all directions simultaneously while arching her back and grabbing <laughs> a hold. Um, so like for me to do that is hard <laughs> and I stand for good hygiene for my daughter. And so like I can stand in that um, and not expect something back from her. Like she's not earning, I'm, I'm not earning love from her by taking care of her diaper. I'm standing in a different place. I think that we can look at our life, whether we, are doing some caretaking, which humans need at times. Um, it's when we fall into that, oh, I have to ple be pleasing to this person and meet all of their needs or else. Right. Um, yeah, I think of like, I love to make waiters or waitresses because I used to do it at the job and I know it's tough. I love to make them smile and I like to like compliment them. And but I don't have to do that if I'm in a really quiet mood. I don't I owe them politeness. I, you know, not going to scream at them, but, you know, there's days when I'm like, wow, that was delicious. Like, thank you so much. Your service was amazing. And I love seeing their face light up, but I'm doing it just because I have the abundance to do that. And I'm not expecting anything different from them. It's I like to see their face be happy, but there's other days when I'm just really quiet and I'm like, thanks so much. And just go back to my, like Rick and I might be talking or something. So I think the pleasing to get something is different from pleasing just because it's fun to see someone's face light yeah, up. Like getting a chance to express your nature in a mm -hmm. way that hopefully is mutually enjoyable. And if it's not, you recalibrate. Yeah. So thank you, Kathy. Thank you all for being yeah, here. Yeah, thank you for being here. Rick, I love what you shared. And thank you for being the kind of people that want to learn about this. Because I think that as we get this awareness, we start walking through the world different and we role model it for people too. So this is very, it's very dear and precious to me that you are here learning this and maybe you've heard it before, but hearing it again is always important. So mm -hmm. thank you. Um, you're welcome to stop by thrivingnow.center. It's our free community center where we engage and explore and go deeper on these as well. So, all right. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you all. Bye for now. Bye everyone.